finish with, I will never be the same again. Uh, thank you, Pastor Adrian, for taking the time on Thursday to come over and visit. Uh, I think the audio's out again. No? Can you hear me normally? I know it's not the bad. The, ah, there we go. I want to thank Pastor Adrian for taking the time on Thursday to come over to see us, to get to know us in person, and I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. The The last music... The last song that we heard was, I will never be the same again. And I pray that this weekend will be an inspiration to you. And that God is already working on your life. But as we move closer to, to the second coming, that God will always bring us in such a way to reflect this pattern that we will never be the same again. That is my desire. And one of these days, 
I'm looking forward to looking back on this event and saying, that's how it was when we were on earth, aren't you? <laughs> There's a lot, of, a lot of pain in this earth still. And uh, the more we feel it, the more we want to go home. Uh, we've been cursed in first world countries like North America and Australia and Europe. We've been cursed with too many resources. And so many of us are comfortable here and we don't feel like going home because it's just fine. Thank you. But the clo when, you get to the, when you get to feel the pain and you see the, the agony firsthand, you start longing for home. And so I want to thank the Lord for the opportunity of being with you here. Thank you for coming. Um, just out of curiosity, because I, it, it's always hard to speak to people that have already heard all of the sermons. <laughs> I just want to get an idea. How many of you have already been listening to sermons uh, 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 that have the name David Gates attached to it? <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Uh, more than half. So uh, for those that, for those that um, haven't or did not raise your hands... Um, I would, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to begin with a few illustrations to kind of lay the, lay the groundwork for the, for the decisions, for the stories. You have to understand a little where we came from. So for those of you that have been hearing, forgive me a little bit as I just uh, express some of those beginning experiments so that those who haven't will understand. It would be terrible for you to... That are, that are already heard everything, to go back and say, well, that was new, I enjoyed it, and those that didn't hear anything, I didn't know what he was talking about. So if it's okay with you, I'm going to start a little bit at the beginning, but we'll accelerate through, and we'll have some new material as we go on, but let's lay, let's lay the groundwork. <clears throat> my, my, my parents were missionaries. My dad was a pastor pilot. My mother was a nurse. I chose to follow in my parents' footsteps, and I became a pastor pilot nurse. And I grew up with my parents in the jungles. All my friends spoke Spanish. But you can imagine how delighted I was when I found out that, uh, that there was another missionary family coming to Bolivia too, and they spoke English. And they had four children as well. I eventually became the best friend of their oldest daughter. We fished together off the mission medical launch. We used to cut trees down together, build tree houses. We used to milk cows together. We did everything together. We used to walk around and visit all the neighbors and, and so on. But when I was eight years old, after several years, of uh, five years of growing, uh, working together, I heard a disturbing rumor that another boy wanted to be her friend too. <laughs> I was quite disturbed and jealous because he told me in no uncertain terms that now it was his turn. And I said, not if I can help it. <laughs> so I went out and uh, bought a, bottle of, a little bottle of perfume I could barely see above the counter. And I, when, my, when my dad flew into their village, I went along with him. I took the bottle of perfume and I, I gave it to her. And uh, she admired it, asked me why I gave it to her. And I said, and I said because I want to ask you to marry me. <laughs> and she agreed to marry me. And uh, 12 years later, she kept her promise. And that's that little girl over there. Becky, would you stand up, please? <laughs> <laughs> Though I have to say that she's preserved her age better than I. She's a little older than I am, but uh, tonight a sister asked me if, uh, asked both of us if I'd brought my daughter along. And uh, that was very kind of her uh, to do that. And that may, it makes me feel older, but it makes her feel younger. And this is very good because I don't mind. Um, I have some gray hairs. I earned those gray hairs, and I'm very proud of them because I got my first gray hairs when I was hijacked in Mexico and spent time in prison, supposedly for 14 years. I, will, I may not be able to get a chance to tell you the full story in just uh, between today and tomorrow, but um, in the book Mission Pilot, which you can find at the ABC, or if you'd like to just download a free copy off the Internet on gospel.